The largest land mammal in North America is the bison. These majestic animals can weigh between 700 to 2,500 pounds. Despite their size, a bison can jump six feet vertically and can run 40 miles per hour. Bison were almost extinct in the late 1800s by overhunting and indiscriminate slaughter. At one time, 30 to 60 million bison roamed North America from Mexico to Northern Canada. We're on our way to Mayor Thorpe, Alberta to meet a leader in the Canadian bison industry. Meet Neil Hochstein, rancher, owner, and managing director of Alberta Bison Ranch. Neil was raised on his parents' beef farm in Pincher Creek, Alberta. Neil's grandfather, Tom Muirheim, was one of the first bison ranchers in Alberta. 1984 was the year that Muirheim bought his first bison and became a full-time rancher. After Neil graduated high school, he traveled extensively visiting 32 countries during the winter months while helping his grandfather on the bison ranch in the summer. Neil took over management of his grandfather's ranch in 2006. In 2015, Neil was elected to the board of directors of the Bison Producers of Alberta, which is a regional association of the National Canadian Bison Association. Farming is everyone's business, not only because it furnishes our daily food, but because it is the base of so many industries and so much of Canada's trade and commerce. So we're just gonna go and uh, feed the chickens. Okay. You know, every, every farm's got to have their little hobby animals. Uh, we have chickens and feed the chickens and the rabbits and, and the pigs. Yesterday I uh, went and uh, all the way to uh, Valhalla. Valhalla is near uh, Grand Prairie. Drove all the way there and I picked up two uh, bulls that, uh, that I'm going to use for, for breeding bulls. And then uh, two uh, cows that uh, were open and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to use that for, uh, for my meat market. We've got some ice here. Watch your step there, Eddie. Yeah. Come on in, I'll we'll do the chickens. The land that you see around here is is uh, is all contained with the uh, to the ranch. Mm -hmm. Up there, if you take a look, up there, right where that little hill is, where that bald spot is, yeah. that's where my grandfather is. Oh wow! Okay, so he's he's been uh, rested there, and then up top there, I got myself a little cabin and stuff set up, hide out and maybe get old. This is um, an Angus bull, the bigger guy. And then uh, you got a Semitol bull and a speckled park. These guys right here. So, and you can tell, of course, that uh, Angus, he's, he's a year older than the other guys, but. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful animals. You see the guinea hens right beside them there. It's really odd. I've never see, uh, seen a white guinea hen. I'll show you something. Get a good picture of him eating. Hey, Storm. See how he eats? There, he's never seen a cat eat like that before. Here, buddy. Yeah, this is what happens when you when you when you're not taken away from your mom and you're only the only cat. You become a, a lion. Got the ducks in here yeah. too. Yeah, we got ducks. Um, 
A neighbor of mine, he always uh, comes over here and grabs a couple for his grandchildren. And then he'll raise them for the summer. And then he'll bring them back as uh, adults. Quite the hodgepodge you got in here, man. Wow. Then I get to see if they give me any rewards. All right. See if we, have, see if we get any breakfast today. The Easter hunt every morning, you know? Beauty. We got two of them over here. In the winter, they don't lay as much, right? They find it pretty cold. Four, five, six. Oh, Eddie, I don't know how big of an eater you are, but it looks like it's just you and me eating eggs <laughs> this morning. Six eggs, so. All right. So this is uh, oyster shells, and uh, oysters are to uh, make them, make the shells hard. Of course, with everything, oysters have now become uh, hard to get a hold of. So they are now processing the, and making calcium pellet. We get to eat the oysters and they get the shells. This here is our uh, ashes that we get from our stove. That's for lice and stuff, get the ash in, the, in there and they cleans them up. They'll clean themselves. Look at the size of this rooster. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's it huge. Chinese horoscope sign is the rooster. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. I, I have an affinity <laughs> for these creatures. Can you grab these eggs for me and just, or yeah, grab that. And I'll put them around here as our little decoration fountain. Oh, you guys want some now, eh? There you go, ducky. Yeah, you feed them all winter long just for a performance for one month. Hey, guys. Up, man don't worry you can eat you can eat do you think do you think so eddie i have uh four horses yeah. actually that's a lie i have three three horses and one mule got a really interesting story with the mule um we call him weed and the reason why you call him weed is because he's such a big mule well actually it's about the size of a big horse so it's pretty cool that way this summer he uh got gorged by a bison. Oh, wow. Right right by the flank. Oh. So I took care of him all summer long. I had to doctor him every day and work with him every day, uh, but he's, he's still alive. How long does that take to heal an injury like uh, that? The vet had said, told me that it was not gonna make it. That I was gonna die within a few days. Southern weather here. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a slippery slope out here. Woo! This is uh, the mule I was talking about. You see on the, on the side there? Yeah. The gouger, so that's that's where he's been, uh, had the injury. Yeah, so you see how the stomach is uh, oozing? Like that's all biomass coming out of there right now. And so it always leaks. And uh, I'm hoping that it, it, it heals up. I mean, I gotta figure out what he's doing. He's really healthy. It's now been, five months yeah so I mean I took care of it a lot I took care of him but it's not it wasn't me it was him who survived and he's that's the strongest animal I've ever encountered I don't even know if a buffalo would last out as long as a as he did but this is Buster, hey, Buster. he's the he's the oldest horse hey Buster Vegas here Vegas hey Vegas hey girl They, they, they smell what you got there, Eddie. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, what you do is just, just put it, spread it out. Yeah. And uh, we got four, four horses here, so just put four little piles. Like that, a little more? Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. 
It's uh, got a little bit of rich stuff. It's got some wheat in there, so just, just a little bit. You ready? Go ahead, guys. You good? You good? Oh, you want the pair of Vegas? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's ne she hasn't been uh, rope trained yet. So uh, the person I got her from, they, they train her without ropes. And I don't, I don't know how to do that. I'm a cowboy. I don't know how to work without a rope. <laughs> We're going to go and uh, look at uh, Bambi right now. And Bambi is uh, a Jersey cow. So I had a Jersey cow and she, she's moved on, but I got a, a baby from her. So she's right now, she's only two years old. And so this year she's going to get bred and next year we'll start milking her. So I, right now I'm uh, with, I have no good fresh go white gold. I like to call it white gold because that's really what it is to me. It's hard to get, get real milk. And I think that's one of the things of being a rancher is that, that you have that luxury of having your own cow and your own milk. Fuel's going to be going up a lot and we're going to have to start making decisions on what, what kind of food we're buying. You know, we're going to have to, it's going to, I've always uh, supported local, local farming and I think we're going to see it more and more and more as, as time comes on. Uh, you know, and also we don't want diseases coming from other places and stuff. We want to be contained, right? So we're going to be learning a lot of this in the future. It was when I was a young, young kid coming out of high school, I was sort of like a hippie and I had traveled all these places and I came out with a new open mind. So when I came out with all this open mind, my first thing was, was I want to be from farmer to, to plate. And that was my model and I wanted to support the, in, the local uh, industry. Where do you hold your farmer's market? So I, I held, uh, I, I started with St. Albert's Farmer's Market first, the biggest uh, market in Alberta. And then I went to uh, Fort Saskatchewan and I was doing a market there. And then I was doing one in Collingwood. I have the, the Bountiful Farmer's Market. Yeah. And it's, it's a really good uh, market for me. The reason why I've chosen uh, Bountiful Farmer's Market is because it's year round and it's indoors. Bountiful Farmer's Market. It, they've been um, doing really good. I've been holding with them, and every year we're we're seeing our, our numbers going up. Uh, plus, the the lady she's 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 into berries and stuff. So you know we, we want to get these uh, things set up so that we can uh, have a supplies. These are uh, my uh, beef calves. I background them. Um, they're they're all born here and raised here and and stuff. So I've uh, these are all the the heifers. Uh, a couple of steers made it behind. Look at this. Um, I'll show you here, Bambi. Yeah, you're gonna be my future milk cow. You're gonna make me milk gold. <laughs> yeah, so she's halter broke. You wouldn't know it. Sit, sit. Stay. No, sit. You're not doing very good. Sit. <laughs> stay. Stay there. Stay. Okay, go. <laughs> so I'll grab my pig food and then I'll, yeah, as you can hear, they're ready. We're involved in the loop program. Have you heard of the loop program? So a loop program is something that they created from the grocery stores. All the produce that they've been throwing away from the, the uh, grocery stores. So uh, we have, there are certain uh, selected ranchers that if you apply for it, to pick up the product from the grocery stores so that we can feed our animals. Pineapple cores, the, the, the side of a pineapple. We got, uh, what else we got here? I don't know what this is. So some flowers, yeah. And we got uh, some borscht. And we got, uh, Seven grain salad. Ooh. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'm using it. Yeah, it's like a spring day today, oh, eh? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, they know what's coming. No, yeah, they, they get here. Last year, I, I bought a, a sow, and she gave me four. Hmm. 
she gave me four uh, piglets. And these are the four piglets. Is there a method to feeding the pigs here, Neil? No, no, this, this is where, where literally it is, where they're pigs and there's no method. They got a trough. Yeah. Uh, that's just, just to make it seem more civil than, than what is. <laughs> and and this, this is the part that, that really uh, is interesting is you could really see now when we're working with this, how much packaging there is. So you get to really understand it. Now you gotta have to go open up every little package and uh, bring it out there. Good, good sandwich there, eh? But. Chicken, chicken and, guys. And... Strawberries, pineapples. They're, that's why they're going to be tasting so good here in the next couple months. These are our rabbits here. They're... They're, they're pretty easy keepers. Uh, they eat alfalfa. When you start seeing this hair, like this here, that means that they are trying to make a nest. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a, a, an older bull. This would be one of my herd bulls. You could tell their age, but it's similar as, as like a tree. Uh, by, by the rings. So this one here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. 11, 12. Um, I always find that they're older than what, what the rings have because they don't get rings till they're three years old. So I mean this one here, he's over 15 years old. If I can't put my two fingers together, yeah, he's really big. This here, is a yak's skull. Yeah. And you can see the uh, different sort of like a longhorn. And then what I want to show you is a, a, a cow. So this is a, a female bison. And you can tell the difference of their horns from a female to a bull. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going this morning, Callan? Good, good. Up, Callan. Yeah, the animals uh, did pretty good there yesterday. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, mate. Peter, nice to meet you. Yep. I might even uh, take the opportunity uh, and, and do that with, with this extra hands I have and, and, and do that. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! Eddie, Eddie Ed, that's what Eddie came here for. We said, yeah. I, I, I'm a mm -hmm. bit bored right now, and I need some that's what some it is. real. I do, I do workouts yeah. in the morning, and I'm tired of that. I'm, I want a real workout during the day. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I was limbering up at like 3:30 this morning, doing pull-ups, couple sit-ups. I'm ready. You got Darth Maul on your dash. It's amazing. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? <laughs> so sick. We are. I love up to the adventure, man. <laughs> ready? <laughs> Get ourselves some buffalo. Let's go. Here you're sitting in the switch and yeah. I'll open up gates. Oh yeah. Switch. Damn. We're gonna feed them in here, catch them in here, and then we'll send them out and then we'll put them down the road and bring them to a different side. Once a year, I'll just move them across the road, right? And then we'll, uh, when we uh, sort them in the summertime, uh, we'll, we'll bring them over here to eat the grass and, they'll, and then uh, stay here till we move them back, right? I mean, I, lo I love the, the horizon every day. It's, look at that. Hey, so. Oh, it's just, there it is. What we came to see. When does the rut start at your ranch? In August? In August. Through till uh, September. September. Yeah. So when they go in heat is of course when the grass when the grass is nice and thick. Yes. And luxurious. And then they'll they'll go in heat, get bred, and and then go through. So that's a natural way of cycle. You know, when all of a sudden you're in love, then that then they it comes a baby, right? Is that Ooh. how the story goes? That's what it is. Yeah, we all have something in common. All right, there you go, Let's go, run.
What's the story with the Alberta Bison Ranch, this location here? Um, this location here, uh, we have actually quite a, it's a unique story. When my grandfather was first here, there was a, a, a neighbor here, Rose. She had, she had five buffaloes. Yeah. And she came over and visited the, her. He came over and visited her. And yeah, realized that this bison thing is, was a thing. And uh, he's from Germany my grandfather and so he went over there to his family over in Germany and they they were interested in it and that and then they invested into the, this 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 ranch uh, before we had the uh, Angus purebred Angus wow. before and that was a really cool thing too because my my grandfather was actually the, the, the guy that kind of started the whole uh, Angus uh, you know you go to McDonald's or you go to I think in W had to get yourself the Uncle Burger or something That's right. and you get that the Angus burger so now it's gone up to that extent. Mm -hmm. So we went from the, the Angus and then um, to the bison. Purchased in 64 and he moved here in 74. And then he raised the bison in 1984. And then I came here in 2004. So every 20 years is, a, is another little jet cycle, right? My, my dad, he comes up here all the time during the summertime when he has time and he gets the projects done always for me. I dream them up and so he builds them and I mean, I really enjoy the opportunity to uh, work with my dad and stuff. I think my, my grandfather would be pretty proud of all these things going on here for sure. I became a director of, of the Alberta Bison Association and uh, I'm really involved with that. And I got, you know, if you uh, believe in your industry, believe what you do, you, you'll figure it out, right? I mean, yeah. And for anyone else who, who's starting up in the bison industry, I've always supported them and said, hey, you know, there's a seat right behind me there. You can, uh, like, hop on and get in front get in the front seat here anytime you want man you know 1888 was the year where they they were almost extinct in north america and the only place that they kind of ran wild was yellowstone park the story is that um, elk island you know the story with elk island there so no. elk island park uh hence the name of for, for elk yeah. so they were actually building it for it to have elk in there and they were wanting to bring the bison up from the states, and the, they weren't actually they weren't ready, so we had brought them over to Elk Island Park. In the 80s, there in the late 80s, we really boomed. Like it really took uh, a sword right up high. And now that we had, the people got the word out there, we're doing a lot better. And uh, now it's uh, just a matter of uh, getting the breeders and and us getting it the mo more supply out there. I think uh, we need some, some some bigger producers out there, and we need to get the the product out in the grocery in the grocery stores. I would really like to see it in, in meat shop. We're a high commodity, and we want we want to stay that way. We want to want to be uh, yeah, there and available, but you know because bison aren't aren't out there to feed the world. You know that's what what pigs are pigs and rabbits are for, and chickens, right? You know they're going to feed the world. hunter-gatherer aspect of our society has been kind of lost, right? Yeah. The, the understanding yeah. at least. Yeah, the, the, has been lost and, and we're not capable of doing it all. You know, we have to understand that we're not all capable to do that. So, you know, we got to find another way to sustain, our sustain ourselves and make sure that um, we appreciate and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. land mammal in all of North America right here. Our animals at home and stuff feed probably about 10 bales a day. So it costs about $1,000 a day to, to feed uh, these animals here. Like uh, how much would you say the cost has gone up since like 2020 for feed? 2021 we had a really good year. Okay. So we were paying $50 a bale. And it can happen that fast. You have we have to be prepared for that, right? To go up like 100%. Yeah. Who do you think is the queen of this herd? Would it be the head of the pack? 
Yeah, usually it will be it will be the leader of the pack, not the king. Yeah. It's the queen. Have you ever heard of the head smashing buffalo jump? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. So how how did they get that that herd off that cliff? The story is is that they would take a, a little you, um, a native would would go and dress himself up as a bison bison calf you know wear the robe or something and dress himself up wow as, as a little bison calf and then they would uh, go out there and grunt to make that that yeah the leader. bowel sound yeah they'd grunt yeah, yeah. that's right yeah like it, they don't move like it like a regular uh, they call it the bellow they do little orange one here There's a, those are the late born ones so that's when they look like and when they're born is nice and little bright orange like that there's another later born one Come on now. There we go. Beauty. Oh, good. Thanks, bro. Bigger the animal, bigger the pile, you know? <laughs> so these are all uh, plains bulls, so I'm a plains breeder. And these are all the, the herd bulls that I, I bring out every, every year. They only have to work uh, two months of the whole year. The other 10 months, they eat me. These big ones are weighing 2,000 pounds. They're, they're between the age of uh, three and 10. So the black one, the one in the center there, yeah. um, he's, he's a real dark black, and so I keep him for his darkness. He's the oldest bull. Wow. You go out to a, into a forest, look for him, and you'll never hear him. Such a big animal like that, you'll never know that they're right beside you. Their windpipes are this are huge, mm -hmm. so they can take in a lot of air at once. So that's why they're such big, fast runners. Is that they can have this big, huge windpipe, and their lungs are big, so they they can gasp in the air real quick. Yeah. And then they also have a tendon that connects from the back of their neck mm -hmm. uh, all the way to to the to the spine, and it's a real tight tendon. And that's why they they have this uh, hump that goes down like this that goes down because this tendon that pulls up is really tight. So that makes, that's why they can turn on a dime is because when they lift up, they have that extra strength in their neck yeah. and that's why they can turn so fast. So working with the animals, when you're working with them, they can really turn on you real quick. Wow. And you have to know that how fast they can really turn around and, uh, and that strength in their neck. Their hump is comprised of all muscle and vertebrae. That's right, yeah, yeah. Like, so they're a hump, wow. yeah, so they're, they're that, that that extra strength and all that extra meat and everything is is right in their neck and they have so much muscle there with with that yeah what bison do is they walk into the storm the storm doesn't bother them they have that big huge cape up front and they just you know they tuck their hat down and they just pile right it right through it right it. yeah you see that last buffalo yeah that's where i want you to stand beauty yeah. you got it bro uh with your rented car rented car yeah my man And these bison are going to go turn, turn left, and they're going to head down the road, turn right into this field here.
you just, no, 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 no. I, I said stay. Okay, you could come, but you're, you're not visiting us in the yaks, okay? You see that, on? God yeah. is watching us today. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. They're very curious animals. Um, they're quite quiet, but yet then, you know, I would never trust one. Uh, the one with the scary, ho ugly, hor scary horns, yeah. she's the only one to watch. The body language was interesting there. Yeah, yeah, her, her, she's the, the, the body language lady. She's the one that says, hey. What origin of, of yak are they? They, they come from the, the Himalayans, the Tibet. Oh, but they're uh, smaller carcasses, right? Like they're smaller animals and they still take two to three years to, to finish. This, this, is a, this is a calf right there. Yeah. There's a cute little oh, calf wow. there. Wow. Oh, and there's uh, two couple of our runts. The black white ones that look like Holsteins. Yeah. They, they call them a royal. And then this one here with the white star on its forehead, yeah. she's a trim. And then there's the, the natural or, or the, the pure blacks. They're more standoffish. Yeah, yeah. But they get close, right? So the bison wouldn't do this, right? Like they're not watching you and saying, hey, what, what's this guy doing, right? Sure, yeah. yeah, she's bluffing me. I'm bluffing her too. It was interesting. Hey! <laughs> Come on, get out of here. They're cool animals. Man, I love the buffaloes, but I love these guys too because they're they're just it's such an interesting animal again, right? Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna grab a couple, feed the the beef cows. Last thing for the day, feed the beef cows, and then uh, supper time. Supper time. Yeah, so this one here I, I took care of as a, as a little baby. We found them. A lot of times what they'll do is um, the mother has twins or something. She'll decide that she uh, doesn't need to take care of them both. The, the bison, they are still wild and they still are very thoughtful of themselves. Number one is themselves. Second is their offspring. Third is the herd. So if they're not healthy enough, they'll decide, they'll walk away from their calf to take care of themselves. Like if you watch your nature, your adventure, nature movies and stuff, you'll see where, where they're always pushing the weak link out. And the bison, they still think that to, to this day, they'll always push out the weak one. And that's how you can know the, the weak ones never get any, any better. You take care of them, they, they have a different smell. Like she'll never go back to the herd. She'll always be different, this one. She doesn't like me a little bit because I always bug her and I try to ride her and stuff. <laughs> so, she's, that's why she walks away from me there. What's your name? Thumper. Thumper. There you go, Eddie. Hop on, she's ready for you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no. <laughs> Eh? Daddy always bugging you, eh? <laughs> she, she knows what, what she's interested in. Now this is like the best sunset I've ever seen. Look at this. Look at that. From dusk till dawn here at Alberta Bison Ranch here in Mayor Thorpe, Alberta with the incredible Neil Huckstein. Neil, yeah, what, what are you cutting right now? This, this is the prime rib. Prime rib. Yeah. What are you using for what seasoning? We, what are we gonna use for seasoning, eh? Yeah. High this? steakhouse? Oh yeah. Season these guys up a little bit. Yeah. Let's do some kikoman. Get up a little bit here. Let it sit for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we'll we'll get them on the grill. 
got prime rib, we got flames. Get some nice grill marks on there. That's what you want, a little char in that meat here. Grilled pumpkin here. A little cracked pepper here. Voila. Yes, sir. You got them good. Oh, look at that. Yes, sir. Yes, my man. <laughs> Ooh, yes. So what we got going on here, Neil? This yeah. concoction here. Just a concoction of uh, <laughs> some rosemary and hidden with um, this. Um, we got fermented lemons here, mm -hmm. fermented um, ginger, and uh, some onions and some garlic. We got raw little pieces of meat. So you got the bison heart here. I'll give it a whirl here. Maybe with the lemon, a little bit of this here. Mm. Yeah, it's delicious. Oh yeah, very good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. My pleasure. So now we get a chance to try some, some yak too. We got ground peppers. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's uh, nice and lean. Wow. It's my favorite meat, actually, more than the bison. I find it sweet and really subtle. Mmm. Oh, wow. The yak tastes delicious. Mm. We're about to uh, eat a delicious pie here that Dallas uh, made for uh, the group this evening. Dallas, what's in the pie? Um, magical huckleberries. Huckleberries. Where would you pick these? Uh, in BC, but like I said, I, I can't tell you where. So in an undisclosed location? Undisclosed location. And uh, we're going to pair it this evening with... Uh, Some ice cream. Vanilla <laughs> ice cream. As white as the snow that lays on the land. <laughs> You won't find this in a restaurant. This is, oh wow. Neil, I would like for you to open this. Something very special, kind of one oh. of a kind. Oh, Joe so, Buffalo. So that's Joe <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah, you got Joe and you got uh, some sweet grass here, it looks like. Yeah. And um, you got the buffaloes. Stampeding into a crawl area. Look at this. It is really quite something. I think that's really great. great. Yeah, thank you. And there's a little write up here, and it says the next graphic from Colonialism Skateboards is celebrating two powerful First Nation warriors, Joe Buffalo and Poundmaker. Joe Buffalo is from Miss Wakis, Alberta, Samson Cree Nation. He has been skateboarding most of his life and is not slowing down anytime soon. It's important to recognize that Joe attended residential schools for five years. Residential schools are now known for genocide. Joe survived this destructive institution and a lot of indigenous children did not. Skateboarding helped him overcome adversity throughout his life by helping him focus on positive activity that not only kept him busy, but also challenged him to grow. So beautiful. Yeah, it's really neat. I really love how they are funneling in down there. And... Yeah, we'll, we'll hang this up. We're hanging out, hanging with Super Pride. Thanks. Thanks a lot oh, for my, my pleasure for coming out. Oh. Yeah, you know, thank you so much for having us here on Culture Roulette. For sure. You know, I always need a guy opening my gates and uh, cut strings. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for everything, bro. We love you. Thank you.